let's do this. Basically, Or's army is doing good in that they already stopped um, Zap from making, from establishing a beachhead in a sense, from establishing a point that they can rest. The bad news is, even with their reserves, they can't really hang out for long, so she's trying to get um, Rose and everybody to rush to the scene as soon as possible. But, well, we really can't. We're trying there as fast as we can. Kakali really wants to protect Or. That's mainly her main thing is to protect Or. Meanwhile, Yuna himself calls and he's like, yeah, you're protecting me? He's like, no, I'm protecting Or. Regardless, um, she's at least gonna protect him a bit because he was at least smart enough to, um, what's called, oppose Destiny plan. So yeah. So yeah, Shizuka's gonna try her best to get as much speed as possible out of the Daikin Mario. And now we're finally getting up to the battlefield. So on the screen we show that apparently everybody else is um, fighting. England's Dragliner, um, China's God Diner, what's it called? America's Genesis Sister. And even Russia's Valspin are fighting on Orb's side. And then Go really wants to know why. Because they don't understand why they're attacking, but... Ah, well. So apparently, or what's called, Go's asking for reasons and he's giving reasons. Apparently, just like Dana Base, Orb has supported all the bases for the past financially and all this other stuff for the past few years. And apparently, um, Night Gears to convince the Randall is just dumb. So yeah. Dang, why didn't they make these guys playable? That's just messed up. But yeah. Yeah, they've been a sponsor, is these ways explain it. Okay, so yeah. Apparently, um they do their best to uh, go straight through with it. <sighs> Meanwhile, Hilda is helping out. She's a Dom um, Trio pilot. So she's basically an ace pilot. She's like... Dude, I can imagine if it were her and her crew versus Amuro instead of Black Tri Stars, Amuro would have lost. Regardless, she's a Lackis, um Well, she's a devotee of Lackis' peaceful future. And let's know that she's at her side. Meanwhile, Shadow and the others are trying to tell them to get here as soon as possible. Since it's yeah, it's not getting any better. So yeah. So now we're going out and we're about to get ready to fight. Everybody is just getting ready to go. Meanwhile, Heine's, uh, Heine, Heine, whatever you call his name, he's surprised that Orb's holding off an entire army this well, apparently. Meanwhile, of course, Ray being Ray, the puppet at first, is wondering why would they, why would he, um, why would Orb even oppose the Destiny plan? Why would they, in their right mind, oppose an ideal world, in a sense? Apparently Heine's actually got some brains to him. He's he has reservations about trying to solve everything through genetics, but of course he's not gonna share that with them. So yeah. Meanwhile Shin looks like he's back to normal. 
basically he's watching the orb getting blown up but he doesn't really want to see it but he does want to see it so he's contradicting himself so yeah basically even though he was born and raised there anybody any place that's taken care of that's being led by the Asuks uh, yeah. the Asuka's um, basically they don't deserve, they don't deserve, um, sorry, authors. But they don't deserve to live. Ouch, man. Meanwhile, Hane's pointing out, why are they not fighting? But apparently the Randall sent them all to Davios base, so they can't really do anything. Apparently, they're there to try and stop the Archangel's attempt to destroy um, Requiem. And yeah, Shin's happy about this. Apparently, luckily, now we're close enough to actually call them up. So, yeah. Unfortunately, the downside of this whole situation is they managed to set up um, the Mobile Fortress Messiah, apparently. Uh, you know, Wallfeld and Lackis, that's the usual. But yeah, they managed to set up Messiah in the data base. So that's where we're going to probably have to destroy everything. Apparently there's also an unknown trump card stashed away. So yeah. Meanwhile, she of course has her little gift and someone for him to meet. So yeah, we're going with them. Okay, so Kigali's just saying get out of there, you know, she's heading straight to the command room, ignoring it. Just ignoring it. Trying to get Durando on the screen or channel or whatever to speak. So yeah. Luckily, he somehow answers. Which surprises me, honestly. Regardless, he tells, well, she tells him to try and withdraw Zaf's troops, apparently, from order. Of course, there's no way to do that without... Well... He'll do it if Orb sets the destiny plan, but they're not, so he's not going to. So yeah, regardless. Durandal says that whoever opposes mankind is the enemy, so... Yeah. Meanwhile, Kigali points out, like, who put, who made him, what's called, who asked him to save mankind? He points out one nation out there would have bought it, and not one nation or whatever, yeah, nobody would have bought it if, what's it called, the alien invasion was going on right now. Regardless, he's just going to continue. So this all ended badly. Meanwhile, Kigali is just rushing, not gonna rush on more bloodshed, but... Oh well, we're gonna have to fight. Of course, Yuna gives her the key card for something that she will need. Apparently it was a gift from her card, from her father. So yeah. So she's got the card key, the hanger, and to the Akatsuki, of course. It's from her father. So 
So yeah, it's for um, this use. Apparently, in the in the mecha hanger, the inscribed is, "May the day this door opens never come." And of course, inside of it is the Akatsuki. This was her father's gift. Apparently, power is merely power, vanity to wish. Wait, yeah, that's the whole thing. It's the Akatsuki, but yeah. What it was saying was vanity to wish it to be anything more, vanity to treat it as anything less. If a sword be needed to protect, draw it. If power is needed, do what you must along the path destiny or things. And then she calls it Akatsuki, and now they're gonna test drive it. So now she has the strike freedom for him, so yeah. And then she reveals, you know, the whole this will be what she needs basically he needs basically to stop all this. As well as the fact that Atherin is there. So yeah, basically what Lacus was saying was like, if Durandal's lights flame, what's called, he so far is someone who's willing to use secret societies as scapegoats, retire the very white people's genes, and even use counterfeit idol singers. So yeah, but yeah, this is where you know both of them are here, all sorts of stuff. So yeah, also if you think about it, Durandal's lights are blamed for the failed assassination attempt. The original actors. So yeah, basically, of course, after you know, escaped faith, got beaten up, and then managed to survive. Basically, you already know the usual, he betrays them. Luckily, Mir and um, Malin manage to protect her. And then they introduce, and they reveal Mir is Lacus's biggest fan. She's the one that Durandal uses as the fake Lacus. So, yeah. Apparently now, even though everything's happening, basically, the Minerva, you know, he's reviewing the whole Destiny and Legend, the whole stuff about them getting it, so yeah. Yeah, apparently they were recalled to the planet to pick up the two mechs, and since they represent the next evolution of war, the war that Durandal wants, he keeps when he wants to end. Questioning things, the usual like, why did he order for the archangel for it to be shut, you know, shot down rather than negotiate? He points out that, um, you know, if they weren't really enemies, they should have joined the side, and they had plenty of time to extend overtures from their side since his original broadcast. So yeah. Also, Talia did give them a chance to surrender. So yeah. During that time, even though he wasn't able to review anything, Mir told him to at least prove his loyalty before Durandal did something drastic. Around the time where he betrays them, um, the police come in for 
the usual questioning thing. Luckily, he manages to evade them. Well, not really evade them, he beats them in a sense. And they escape. During this time, Mir basically sacrifices herself in a sense. You know, after he gets to escape, sort of. The usual. Yeah, she couldn't leave because, once again, she's the pseudo lackis in a sense. During that time, Mailing came in and helped him out, but in exchange, Mailing got expelled from Zaft. Or Mayrin. I don't really care anymore. So yeah, apparently she did it of her own free will, and yeah, now that time out their own, the whole situation. Is where they tried leaving. So yeah, they're she's gonna be destroyed basically. And then they're done. Basically, during this, the whole cause of this thing was the fact that Ray is still manipulating Shin and that Shin must eliminate the Randall's enemies and Atherin is an enemy. So, yeah. During this time, unfortunately, he points out to the Randall that um, Shin is literally unstable, and of course, he's got to say, you know, something's up with that. But the Randall doesn't really mind it. Yeah, after this, they head back and the Eternal comes in and swoops them up. Ugh. Apparently, um, yeah, it just confirms uh, him the truth of how corrupt Randall really is. Unfortunately, it turns out now, um, what's called, the uh, Federation is apparently trying to attack Dadio's base as well. So yeah, they're gonna try and attack him now as well, so they can take a control of work we have to destroy every single plant, every single coordinator possible. They're also doing it for Seven, that's Phantom Pain's thing, they're doing it for their own leader in a sense, which, he's not dead, but that's what we know, so yeah, meanwhile, of course, they put Sting in another destroyer, so yeah, they point out that the extendeds are just weird, but yeah, to destroy every single coordinator, Not really worried. Well, now he's worried. So yeah. So now we're just sending everybody. Oh yeah, I got everybody back. There actually isn't really much to do. Cause 
Anybody that wants to be alone is alone. I'll probably just give him a guy again, bro. Throw him as in your bone, right? So yeah, now we're going to Requiem and we're going to destroy it. Apparently, they got orders from on the fe from their higher ups to destroy the Archangel first, because the Archangel really wants to destroy Requiem, which is what they want. So yeah, these guys are good with it because once again, they killed to them. So yeah. Meanwhile, Miss is just dumb and he's like, damn, why couldn't we talk this out? But yeah, he's not going to. Meanwhile, Moon wants to go up against the destroy. Because it's one of his former stu his former FET subordinates. The least he can do is do something what's called is put the kid out of his misery apparently. And then he says his usual stuff. As the man, you know, he shares he assures her that as the man makes the impossible possible. He'll come back to her and he's surprised that he said that himself. Alright, let's kill everything. Blood and Carnage. They should do really is give um like I don't know what's called sorry. What they should do is give um at the least after in a movement spirit command. That's what they should at least do. But they're not going to. Let these guys handle this. We're just kind of go through this quickly. But yeah, this is basically one of the final fights of Gundam C. Destiny. That evil. Because I want to be in between the action. But yeah, basically they're fighting each other. It's kind of sad, but while well, war is something that we're always in, so it kind of makes sense in a sense. Over skill. Does he have a cut in? Oh snap, he does. I wonder how much drugs they gave him for this. He even has that kind of cut in, okay. than Dragoons. That reminds me though that I do need to play through Super Hour Wars Double. Solely for the fact that I really love Double was like my gateway. Oh boy, she's done for. Yeah, Double was my gateway into DS Super Hour Wars as well as emulation in general. Because it was one of the first games I did. Yeah, it was during my time in school, in high school. Where thanks to my pal, his name is Before Raids. Um, he gave me an art. Well, he gave me the link to buy an R4 and taught me how to use it. And when I learned how to use it, yeah, I started downloading stuff and doing stuff. I still have that R4, and I'm using a new one now for the 3DS. 
And that's how I'm able to do most of my stuff now. Like, ironically, this is being played from an actual 3DS. I don't really like the whole emulating of a DS thing on a, my computer. Kill all these first real quick. And then after we kill all these, we'll continue on with killing the rest of them. Man, you think they'd give someone like him a movement command? Dang, she's only got 99 HP. Dang, I messed up. is how I originally played on um, Super Raw Wars games. It was a great time. this one. Nah. So yeah, to be killed by a coordinator. In um, the original one, I think she got killed by grunt units, if I remember correctly. show off what it can do but yeah i buy them now luckily since they don't cost much the ps2 super Raw wars games barely cost a thing the ps1 ones barely cost a thing super Raw wars 64 costed me like eight dollars then you could just switch the back of the cartridge and it'll be usable in the american one i think the only ones that really cost money now are the new ones that come out that's like only 80 to 90 dollars max Okay, I might as well finish them off. But yeah, not many Super Hot Wars. I think the most I've spent on a Super Hot Wars game was probably when the Japanese yen was a little bit higher. And Super Robot Wars OG 2nd costed me $116. That was from Play Asia. But because it looks like the yen is losing its value a bit, Super Robot Wars games haven't really cost much. I mean, when you think. Nice play. Yeah, when you think about it, which is what I'm thinking about right now, he's dead. And when you think about it, the one that costed me. 
I know T by now it will release and I already bought it. It cost me like $95, no $98 at when I pre-ordered it. That's because in my case I always do um immediate shipping no matter what. Yeah, don't quote me on it, but basically I think it's because it's losing value, really. None of the new games really cost as much as the old games used to. Also, importing has become much easier now. So that could also be another reason why. See if he has any quotes against him. Nope. I'd sadly he doesn't have a quote, but not oh well. Actually, when you come to think about it, we haven't really done anything with G. Yeah. Might as well show off this attack. The double spin storm. Powerful attack and bam. And of course, cool posing. some experience, right? Then the real final fight starts. Regardless, um... So yeah, apparently none of them are prepared for... Whoa, it's about to strike, isn't it? These guys are here and they luckily they warned the Archangel about the whole Neo Genesis thing right here. So yeah. And he uses it to wipe off all of the Fed forces right there. But yeah, as, she, as Koji even points out, Dr. Hell wasn't really even that evil. Like, Dr. Hell wants to rule the world, but not through genetic testing. Alright, so apparently, um... Basically, they're talking about the hatred of the de Destiny Clan, in a sense, like, as Lacus was saying, basically, that, what's called, the ones of the world people, what's called, sorry. Ah, 
Sorry. I'm... I'm really out of it, honestly. I'm just tired. But yeah, basically, Lacus hits that, um... The Destiny Plan's based on weakness. By taking away man's kind, mankind's reason to aspire, to dream of the future, it robs mankind of his very soul. Then the others are saying stuff like, Who wants a world full of people who exist only to exist nothing more? Moving means fighting for every inch of progress. And that's what it says to give... That's what it says to give the Randall, basically. So now we better do it before it refills. Meanwhile, apparently Dr. Mario confirms that everybody's they um the enemies have retreated and the orb is clear for the time being. But unfortunately the tactical retreat won't mean a thing if Rector William gets involved. So yeah. Meanwhile, as we're trying to get to space to destroy Requiem, we're about to get stopped by a medic beast. So yeah. Luckily everybody else is gonna beat the Memetic Beast for us while we get to space to destroy Requiem to save the world. Seriously, they should've made these guys playable. I can imagine if God never appears in a mainstream title next, they'll probably have to make a playable. So yeah, that's the vote. So now we're heading to space to get Requiem destroyed. And Kathali's with them as well, so she's going with the Akatsuki this time. Meanwhile, the Randall's trying to get to recharge and... Yeah. Of course, the Ark is at being smart and asking Isaac if they really should order, you know, I guess when they should even follow his orders, but if they'd be better off there by the Archangel's hands. So yeah, meanwhile, Isaac, being Isaac, just shouts at the Ark to shut up about it because he's already... He's, he just doesn't know anymore. So yeah, now, after this, 